Hello everyone, Conius here. Today I'm flying from Fort Sumner, New Mexico to Lubbock, Texas. I'll be flying a Beechcraft 350i King Air dual prop. We'll be flying at a flight level of 8,500 feet. And let's go ahead and get started. Trying to watch the engine. I've noticed that these dials over here are turning red and blinking. I put the flaps down. Maybe that's not necessary. Seems like we're floating a little bit early. All right, let's go ahead and take off. to begin turning in the proper heading as well as raising altitude. KH319, continue for east departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Tower KH319, continue for east departure. This wasn't my preferred direction to take off in, but the other runway that's kind of in the direction of the heading was too short. I tried to take off earlier and I reached the end of the run runway before I gained enough speed, so I had to switch runways. Uh, so we need to keep turning a bit more, get those lines to converge, and then I'm going to turn over navigation to autopilot. KH319, you are leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Tower KH three one nine frequency change. Albuquerque Center KH three one nine is Type Beechcraft King Air five miles east of Kilo. Thank you to the co-pilot for handling all the tower traffic. Request flight following. KH three one nine Albuquerque Center. Squawk zero six four two. Okay, so hopefully these lines will begin converging the magenta line segments in the compass below. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to begin leveling off because we're about at our cruise altitude. Let off the throttle just a little bit. Copy KH319. Alright, it looks like the lines are converging. Getting speed. I'm going to drop throttle just a little bit more right to the center detent on the throttle stick. We're still going a bit fast, so I'm going to drop it down. I want to go up into the red zone on the speed. And I don't want to climb much higher, so just need to find a good throttle speed. This is only the second or third time I've flown this particular aircraft, so I'm not completely used to it yet. Alright, so now we're turning into our heading. Pull up on the stick to maintain altitude. I'm using the latest update from a couple days ago, I think it's uh, the I don't know, October 29 update or something. It's supposed to have made the surfaces of some aircraft a little twitchy, so we'll see if that's the case. Alright, so we're essentially on heading, so let me go ahead, I've already got navigation on an autopilot, so let's go ahead and engage autopilot. Alright, so I should be able to let, let off the stick and let it take over. And then the other thing is, I would like to go up to our altitude. So, go 
ahead and turn on flight level change. Check that barometer. Okay, looks like we're good there. Uh, this master caution, let me see what that's all about. I don't think I'm overstressing the engines. I'll pilot on, but the yaw damper is off, so I should probably turn the yaw damper on. Okay, that'll smooth out the <laughs> heading, I believe. I've never actually used that before, but anyway, we'll see how that does. So I think it's stable. Let's go ahead and go, ahead and go outside and take a look around. Primarily need to keep an eye on my airspeed and then secondarily my altitude. Um, we're supposed to be climbing. I'm going to go with some more thrust because it's not currently climbing. And we've got plenty of headroom left in the speed to do so. I'm going to get it to uh, 8500. 80, Got a good vertical speed, engine speed's good. Looks like we're not in the yellow zone on the engine, on both engines. Um, interesting, the angle of attack meter is off, so I guess this plane doesn't have that capability. Alright, we're approaching our target altitude, so I'll need to let off the throttle before we head up into the red zone as we level off. I don't know if we'll see the plane physically level off. But I do see the speed increasing, so I'm going to pull back. I think the center detent may not be enough. I'm going to go a little below. Okay, I can hear the speed drop a little bit. That sounds good. Alright, so I think we're at a level straight cruise. Doesn't seem to be a lot to look at around here. Some all agricultural stuff. If I see anything interesting to investigate, I can pop the drone out and go take a look at it, but otherwise this looks very flat, looks pretty much like I would expect. There's this sense of curvature in the earth if you look at the horizon, but that's an optical effect, so we're not high enough to see any curvature. So again, not much to see here in the southwestern U.S. Seems like a lot of room for expansion if we can get water and power into all these places. Alright, I'm going to return to the default view. Then we go back inside. see how it looks popping our head up this way. You, you can kind of, yeah, that's not, that's not so bad actually. To look around. Unlike some of the other airplanes I've been flying, you can actually see the engine there and the propeller right out the cockpit window. I see what looks like a pretty accurate reflection in the nose cone. I wonder if that's using ray tracing or not. Maybe it doesn't need to. Still learning the controls in the plane. I found that the avionics were too dark, but it turns out that the control is up here. So I was able to turn those all the way up for daytime use. I tried to fly earlier, and I guess the battery ran down, I lost all power, couldn't get anything to work. 
couldn't even contact the tower to ask for a startup or anything. And when I did that, the uh, voltmeter showed zero voltage across the board. So, um, I guess when you're sitting there on the tarmac, you do have to pay attention to that. Okay, back to the default view. There we go. Okay. Alright, might as well go back outside. There's not much to see in here. Again, it's just you know, flat as far as the eye can see. I change the view here, I can kind of look past the plane maybe. More potentially ray traced reflections here. That's very interesting. Still learning the full character characteristics of my card, the uh, RTX 2080 Ti, uh, previous gen, basically. Yeah, I can see a picture of you know what's behind us on the reflection, so I think that it may actually be ray tracing. Windows were doing some funny blinky things. It's, it's probably a reflection conflict or something. Let's see if I can get that to happen again. Oh yeah, interesting. That is a pretty plane. I tried flying the Cessna jet, the Citation CJ4, and I just really didn't like it for a variety of reasons. Couldn't see the displays very well. Seem kind of finicky. It's difficult to land. So trying out this craft. Uh, so far, I like it. You see, um, it's a little on the twitchy side, but I think it's a, a good next step up because it's faster. Still having a lot of trouble with nice smooth landings, so that's something I need to work on. All right, back to the default view. I do see a settlement of some kind up here. So let's go ahead and get the drone out and take a look at that. Alright, so we need to go with the speed. I can probably stay connected to the plane for now. Track IR. Okay, that's new since the latest patch. I don't know what that actually does. I didn't, didn't like being turned off. I'll have to look up what that's all about. Alright, but we're on the drone now, so I can, uh, I'll stay just connected to the plane, but I can go off and explore the settlement, see what's going on here. Not sure what area this is, not sure if we've crossed the border between New Mexico and Texas yet. Anyway, it looks like a primarily agricultural area. Um, kind of simple-ish houses and yards. Of course, that's you know the AI putting stuff in, so who knows what's really actually there. Uh, almost looks like a racetrack, an unfinished racetrack. Uh, and those look like Nazca lines over there in roads. In fact, I should really go over and check that out. That looks like an eye and some other things. That is really interesting. I wonder what that's all about. Again, we're being dragged behind the plane. Along an invisible thread or something. Uh, should periodically just make sure that we're not overdoing other than anything. The throttle could be dropped a bit. It looks like we're almost in the yellow. Go inside and see if those uh, enunciators are okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing any flashing red over here, so I think we're okay. All right, so we'll just go back to the drone. Some kind of water coming up. That looked interesting. Just a lot of plots of agricultural land with not much going on. This seems to be a default texture. I've been seeing it 
all over the place in the southwest. It's a little on the ugly side. I think if they don't know what's down there, they put that kind of sickly green texture in. Um, yeah, you can, like I said, you can just kind of see it all over the place. All right, well, let me see if I can head over to the water. I kind of hear the plane, I think. We may actually be moving faster than the plane is, technically. All right, so the water is always kind of fun for reflections on things and also makes the place feel a little bit livable, I guess. Not just a you know, dried up desert or something. Uh, I don't know if there's anything to reflect. Oh, there's the sun. Okay, well, that works. Oh, it's not that interesting. Uh, I could try dropping down into the water, see if, uh, see if what the water is doing at the bottom level here. Alright, and the drone won't go underwater. If I don't lift up soon, it's going to drag it along the ground. So, just a big, wide open, flat space, not much to look at. It's about what I expected. I think it will get interesting as I get towards the more populated areas. But uh, pretty much all of Arizona, New Mexico has been pretty uninteresting. Um, I even thought Roswell, New Mexico would be interesting, but there wasn't much to see there. Okay, another body of water. Just go back and check on the plane. Looks like we're changing center, so we're going to be crossing the state line. Trying to see if I can get a reflection on the water, but nope, no dice. That's an interesting change in the look of the area here. Some kind of vegetation, kind of, some kind of very strange looking vegetation. No, it's okay now. Seemed like the shadows were inverted when I first looked at them. Oop, getting myself totally dizzy by doing all that. It's a little weird seeing these paved roads in the middle of all this agricultural stuff, like cutting right through fields and things. I don't know if that's quite right. Maybe it's AI guessing. I mean, why would there be a curvy road in the middle of this big field? That's odd. It could be that those are paths and they're not really roadways or something, and they shouldn't be shown paved. I don't know. What's this? All right, I'm going to head back to the external view. controls inside having to do with propeller pitch, I believe, if this is what I'm remembering correctly. Uh, RPM control, I guess that's, maybe that's related to propeller pitch. It's something I don't know how to mess with and don't plan to, but at some point I might try to figure that out. Uh, interesting interested in what the feather option here means. Um, really like to learn about all this stuff. 
Wait, what does this friction lock do? I guess this is related to trims of various kinds. Runner trim. This must be for programming navigation or something. These are all inoperative, unfortunately. It'd be nice eventually if all buttons at least did something. If they at least just turned. Hey, H319er, contact Lovac approach on 119er, SML2. I'm not sure what this is. It looks like some kind of an auto adjuster of some kind, but I have no idea what it's auto adjusting. Approach KH319, 8,500 feet. KH319, Lubbock approach. Continue as planned. All right, Lubbock approach. So that's now the main tower in control for this part of our flight. So again, just looking around, trying to see what all is in this new airplane. Fuse panel's not interesting, nothing to do there. Now oh, that's interesting. Okay, so this must be like outside temperature maybe. Yep. 28, that's not bad. I don't know what happens if you actually turn them on. <laughs> Does somebody come rescue you? Uh, that'd be interesting to know. Alright, so these controls I'm not sure, but I guess it's fuel related. Okay, so this must be showing our fuel tanks. Come on, need test. <coughs> Excuse me. Standby pump, I guess if the main one, oh that's an active anyway. Um, I haven't really spent any time playing with controls related to fuel, but at some point I'd like to learn about it, maybe learn about setting mixture at the right times, that kind of thing. I think these are more fuses. Yeah. Cross feed flow, yeah, I don't know, I guess maybe you do that when you're trying to uh, keep the plane center of gravity in the right spot or something. Mic oxygen, I guess? Or maybe it's the, uh, if you have the oxygen mask on it, switches the mic over to that one. Okay, I just, I just turned, clicked something, I didn't mean to. sure what I touched. The display still looks okay. But I do want to see if I can get this back. I don't I didn't think that these things had to do with this is all like calm stuff. I wouldn't think that would affect the control. So it looks like you can do some touchscreen stuff here. Okay, so it just I hit something up here, I got into a mode. That's transponder. Um, audio. Hopefully the co-pilot is dealing with the radio, so he'll figure out what frequency to use, because I'm not sure. <laughs> Alright, and reset the view. Uh, I feel like the avionics panels are a little on the dim side still, but they may not be turned up a this point. Oh, yes they sure are, okay. So let's just turn everything up. Then. It's daytime, mid midday, let's make it much easier to see. Yep. Looks like a shadow through the propeller over here, maybe? That's interesting. I would imagine that would be difficult to compute in high resolution, so it looks very choppy. Now, why is this back on? The 
This blade looks different than it looked before. Um, something's different. This, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's fine. Oh yeah, so I guess it's when you click there. CDI source, right. Oops, that's gonna be a problem. It tried to uh, change to VFR or something. I mean VOR. Um, Alright, let's go back outside. I think everything's in good shape. It does seem like it's time to start declining in altitude though, so let's go back inside for a second. I'll set a new target, let's say 6,000. Drop off the throttle, let it catch up. That's a pretty fast descent rate. I don't think that's a problem. It didn't look like the plane was going to be stressed out, but it did seem like it was awfully fast. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but we didn't overstress or you know, overspeed the engine. So I think we're fine. It looks like the RPM is up in the yellow or just approaching the yellow. I'm going to look at those uh, enunciators again. But I'm not seeing any problems there, so I think we're okay. And then I'll just need to thrust up again once we level off at the target altitude. Okay, so it feels like we've gotten on co course somehow. Let me just make sure that nav is still turned on. It's not. Okay. That's because I changed the CDI setting and put it back and it was just flying straight but not according to heading. But it'll, it'll put us back on. Let's go back inside. We're going a little on the fast side, I think. Let's slow it down just a little bit. I don't want to come into landing with too much speed behind me. Uh, I will soon take over from autopilot. <coughs> we do need to descend further though. The airport's at 3200 and we're at 6000, so we need to drop. Uh, maybe another couple, couple thousand. Let's do fifteen hundred. Right, drop throttle.
barometric pressure is staying the same. Hitting B occasionally just to make sure that we're calibrated properly as far as altitude goes. Co-pilot's going to contact the tower momentarily. So we approached our target altitude, but I'm not thrusting up this time because I don't want to build up a head of steam coming into the landing. We'll wait here for co-pilot to talk to them. Lava Tower K I'll take over from is on one, one miles northwest with Yankee to land. KH3, one Landing guide in a moment. There it is. Alright, I'm not sure where the entrance exactly is, but let's go ahead and reset the view. I am going to take over for autopilot. I'm going to nose down a little bit so I can see what's going on here. So it looks like I, I, see, I see where the entrance is, I believe. So just need to head over to there, but I can't tell where it is in relation to all the other bits of the landing pattern. Also, I may be dropping a little bit too much in altitude, so I'm going to head back up. Uh, I'm actually going to put the flaps down. And then push hard forward on the stick. Landing gear, yep, that sounds like a good idea. Thank you, automated voice, sir. KH319, clear to land runway 17 right. 1263 3. Alright, so again, I think I know where to go for this entrance, but it's just feeling a little confusing. I may be heading over the top of the airport and turning past it, but we'll see. We don't need to keep climbing. Yeah, but the entrance is clearly there, so if I get myself there, I should be good. I just don't like the idea of flying over, you know, right over the airport to do so. If that's what's in fact happening. And I'm trying to restrict myself to staying inside the cockpit during critical flying moments as part of self-learning. Alright, so I think, I think our altitude's okay at the moment. It's a little hard to judge from here, but we've got some room to maneuver. Parts of it, so I'll just head in that direction. Maybe that's the opening right there. Okay, I see where the marker is. My altitude may be okay. So I'm going to dethrottle a little bit. Not all the way down, but most of the way down. There's some kind of an RA number showing up on the screen. I haven't seen that before. I'm not sure what that is. 
Maybe it has to do with some kind of automated landing, something or other. I don't know. Still seems like the avionics are a little dark. I have them turned all the way up. Of course, I'm watching on a laser projector during the daytime in my living room, so at night it would probably be, you know, with full contrast, it'd probably be just fine. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and make my turn into this bracket. That's not helpful. <laughs> I guess the internet connection is back? I don't know. Anyway, it didn't seem to affect us. Successfully connected? Okay, well that's a good thing. These brackets, again, are just they're very confusing because some of them are at a funny angle, so I don't really know, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing here or not. I don't understand this bracket here at an angle. It seems like it would be banked in the other direction. Uh, but, you know, we'll figure it out. Maybe that's just a design error in the landing tube or something, I don't know. My fear is that I'm, I don't know, entering the wrong direction or something, but we are heading down, so this must be the right direction. I'm going to dethrottle just a little bit more, try to lose some of this speed. Yeah, that sideways bracket back there, I don't know if that was meant to be that way. Maybe it's just an optical illusion and it is correct. I just couldn't really tell. I've got the engine all the way throttled down. Um, maybe the flap should go down all the way. Because I feel like we're going too fast like to slow down, but I don't want to suddenly gain a bunch of altitude. Whoa, okay. I think I'm stressing the plane out a little bit here. 500. Landing gear is down. Um, a little hard to tell where exactly the runway is. Okay, there it is. Alright. So, just try to float over there. Watch my thrust a little bit there. Don't want to land short. Um, I need to push down on the stick or we're not going to make it. Alright, well, this is feeling good so far. Um, a little craziness back there with turning the plane, but it feels like we're on course to land. I'm going to drop throttle all the way down. Has to turn there. I'll take some other turn. Okay, it's giving us. All right, so back to the pedals. Let's see. Now that we're working okay now. I think I need to reduce the sensitivity though. It was very hard to keep the plane going stable forward earlier. I am taxiing too fast. I need to slow down. This is actually uh, way too fast. Runway with 
forward even with a throttle at the very lowest. So I'm having to apply more brakes than I'm used to. Alright, and then the tricky turn and pivot move here. Oops. Just going way too fast. And there's people right going here. Going to 121 decimal niner, KH319. Um, Love ground, KH319 taxi to parking. Interesting. KH319 taxi to general aviation parking using taxiway Alpha Lima. Taxiing to general aviation parking via taxiway Alpha Lima, KH319. Alright, so let's continue off to parking. Looks like a beautiful day in Lubbock, Texas. Another vehicle ahead, but it doesn't seem to be moving, so I think we're okay. It's really easy to get going way too fast in this plane on the tarmac. I'm gonna have to be careful with that. Just kind of lean on my brakes, I guess. Very rambunctious plane, it really wants to go fast on the ground. It has to be able to put the flaps up in the opposite direction, maybe spoilers or something. Air brakes of some kind to slow it down. Alright, so here we are, here's our landing zone. Let's see if we can finesse into a nice landing here. Well, oh, parking. Take a long time to cool down. All right, and then I was not a hundred percent sure how to turn off the plane the last time. Let's see. I think it might be that. Yep, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.